Hi, this video is dedicated to the World Chess Championship match, which is going to happen in New York between the reigning world champion Magnus Carlsen and the contender Sergei Karakin. For this video, I have selected the top 5 most impressive games played between these two opponents, so we'll go through some really amazing games and we'll see who has higher chances in their upcoming match. I'm Igor Smirnov, the Grandmaster and a coach from the Remote Chess Academy, and it's my pleasure to be your host today, so let's go ahead and get started with the games. In this game, Karakin is playing white and Magnus Carlsen is playing black, the game is from 2009. It was white to play, and it looks like a relatively standard opening position where both players are just developing their pieces. White played b3, aiming to kick away that knight from c4, which is currently under attack, and then white will be able to finalize his development, develop his dark squared bishop, and will have a normal middle game position. However, things are not quite that simple when it comes to the world best players. Here Carlsen found a very interesting counter blow. It's the move knight takes e4. Instead of retreating with his c4 knight, black is sacrificing another knight. And the point is, after white captures this knight and black recaptures white's knight on d4, and at the same time black is attacking along the long diagonal the white's rook in the corner. And that's the problem for white now. After the exchange of queens, now white's rook is in danger and white has to do something about that. It's quite amusing, what I really love about this game is that it is full of counter blows. With almost every move, both opponents could counter blow. Here white a little bit missed uh, the mark and played rook b1, which is a normal but a bit passive move, while instead he could have continued in the same counter-attacking style by playing bishop to h6. That would be the most powerful move for white. However, instead he played a more simple move rook b1, and now black made one more counter blow with the move d5. Instead of retreating with the knight, black keeps counter-attacking. Here comes the white's turn to show his creativity, and he played rook d1. You see, it's really cool with Every move both players are attacking each other and none of them wants to defend and go passive. Black captured the knight and rook d4. Now finally it's time for black to retreat with the knight. And here again instead of just simply capturing the pawn on e4, white made another attack and move bishop h6 and only here he took the finally took that pawn on, on the e4. Now it looks like the station comes down and we have an approximately equal endgame. Is that correct? Well, not exactly. Here Carlsen found a winning blow in this seemingly simple position. You may think about that for a moment. It's the move bishop to f5. And the thing is, if white tries to capture that bishop, which is the most natural reaction, black will go knight of 3 with a double attack for the white's king and the rook. Therefore here black will win material. And if we go back, we'll see that it's not so easy for white to counter that threat, because also white cannot just remove this bishop from e4, because the rook on b1 will be hanging. Therefore white tried to remove his king from the potential danger, but it didn't quite work. Black played rook d8, and it turned out that the white skin on h1 falls into another blow. Now, in case white makes the most natural move, rook takes d8, Instead of just recapturing with the rook, black has the very powerful intermediate move bishop takes e4, with the check to that king on h1. That's a really annoying check for white, because after that black simply recaptures back the rook and now he is a piece up and it's totally winning. In the actual game, instead of taking black's rook on d8, white tried to escape with the rook and he played rook a4, but black continued to chase it with playing b5, and here white actually resigned, because after rook b4, black plays a5, and white cannot save his pieces, which are all under the attack. A really amazing game by Magnus Carlsen, while actually both of the players showed great creativity, and you can really see how powerful counter blows are. In this game, Carlsen is playing white, while Karakin is black, 
The game is from 2015 and this time it was uh, totally different. This time Karakin was dominating the game and the white skin was in a big danger, although white managed to hold the position, still black is pressuring the position a lot and uh, at this point black could have played a totally brilliant move, which he have missed in the actual game, but anyway, just I've noticed that move while analyzing the game and I would like to share it with you. You may try to pause the video and think about that. I have to warn you that the move is a difficult one, even Karakin missed it in the game, but the move that he could have played at this position to win the game right now, it's the absolutely brilliant move rook to a1. Black is sacrificing hollow rook and just putting it on the very well protected square of white. And the idea is, Black wants to deflect one of the white species from the protection of his king. So if white captures that rook by his own rook, then Black will simply checkmate with queen g2. And instead if white captures the rook with a queen, then white lost the protection for the up to pawn and black can simply go ahead and take it and it's also a checkmate on the next move. The combination seems to be relatively easy but anyways just uh, you can see that at this position I can imagine how shocking it would be to face the move like rook to a1. Yeah that would be a total disaster for Carlson. In the actual game black didn't play that move but he won the game anyway. Here is another encounter between Carlson playing white and Karakin playing black. At this relatively equal position, some interesting things happened at this point. Black took the pawn with the knight, he took just knight takes a4, but it turned out that after bishop to d5, black is just about to lose the exchange. Because the rook cannot go back to e8, in this case after bishop c6, White is attacking both the rook and the knight on a4, so here black will lose the rook anyway. And uh, instead of he would play rook to e7, which happened in the game, then white continues with bishop d6, winning the rook on the pin. By the way, it's a really funny thing while analyzing the games between Carlsen and Karakin, I just realized how often Karakin is playing awfully with his rooks, so he's either losing them or missing the moves with the rooks like it happened in the previous game. So I'm not really sure how to explain that, but somehow uh, Karagin is really bad with the rooks. Anyway, here he found a really interesting counter trick. Although it seemed like Black is now in a tough situation, he played a very creative move b5. It looks, looks really bad because he's just losing a pawn, but here after rook takes d5, the Karakin's idea was that he now can play knight to b6, and now the square was vacated for the knight, and now he's double attacking the white's rook and bishop, and therefore now it's white's turn to give away the exchange. Which happened after e4, black took the rook, and here after these exchanges they got into an end game with an equal material, white is more active and he's better, but anyway, the last few moves showed great creativity for most of the players and how tricky they are. Later on White won this game, I will not show you the whole game, it was a very long battle, you can see uh, the full game, you can download it using the link from the description below the video. This time Karakin is playing uh, White, Carlson is playing Black and it's a uh, very impressive game, I was uh, really amazed to see it, uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it too. Currently it is white to play, white is a pawn up, he has the extra pawn on the e4, but at the same time uh, black is uh, putting pressure on the white's position and the white's king is slightly exposed, uh, currently black can potentially give some checks along this diagonal, and white decided to hide the king in a safer square h2. Well, <laughs> If Karakin would knew what's gonna happen, he would never put his skin there. But let's find out what, what happened after that. Carlson played knight h5, attacking the pawn on the f4, and white made a very natural move g3 to protect it. Now it looks like white is totally solid and he's just dominating the whole position, being still a pawn up. But Carlson had something in mind. He played f6 to kick away the knight, 
and once white played knight g6, black just destroyed the white's position with a, an amazing sacrifice, knight takes f4. The black's idea was to simply destroy the pawn cover around white's monarch and then start an assault of that lonely king. For instance, here black can play f5 using a pin along this diagonal and trying to open up the diagonal for the bishop. And even more importantly, black is ready to bring his rook on g6, attacking the king, and the king will be checkmated very soon. It is also a little bit funny to notice that uh, white has a number of pieces on the queen side, which are just too far away from the king and cannot help protecting it. Going back to the starting position of this combination, black played knight f4, and let's just see what would happen in case here uh, white wouldn't capture the bishop, which helps black to bring his queen closer to the attack, but simply would retreat with king, let's say to h1. Here there is another excellent move that black can play, it is to sacrifice an exchange but by playing rook takes e4. And an idea of this exchange is to clear the diagonal for black's light squared bishop, which is hitting the white's king. And you can see that now both of the black's bishop are looking towards this king. And this is always an extremely powerful position for your pieces to develop a devastating attack. For example, after the exchange on the e4, you can see that now these two bishops are in a perfect harmony and attacking all the squares around the white's king. After the following moves, like queen g3, white is just totally defenseless. Black has so many threats with queen g1, possibly queen f3 or bishop d3, and it's just totally hopeless for white. Black can do whatever he wants. Great game by Carlsen, and excellent example for the art of attack. By now, after the last really impressive victory by Carlsen, you may be thinking that the world champion is ready to devastate cracking in their upcoming World Championship match. But let me show you the game that may change your mind. Currently we see a very tense situation. The white skin is exposed and black is uh, ready to attack it. But at the same time, white is attacking the black's rook on d8 and his d7 pawn is really powerful and ready to go forward. It's just one square away from promotion. Therefore, both players have their chances and uh, let's see what happened after that. Here black played bishop d5. The idea is pretty straightforward. It is to checkmate white by playing queen takes g2. And at first it looks like white is defenseless. However, Carlson found a really amazing move. He played rook a2. He's putting the rook under the attack. And the trick is, in case black accepts this, well... In, in a way sacrifice, in case black captures the rook, which is actually a mistake for black, now white would capture black's rook on d8, and now the situation changes entirely, he is threatening to play queen e8 with a checkmate, while the white's pawn on d7 is ready to go forward, so the situation spins around, now it's totally different than it was just one move ago. You just can see how tricky Carlson could be, but uh, cracking made a cold-blooded move, rook takes d7, so he didn't take the white's rook, but just simply took that pawn on d7. White played queen b5, and now we have a bit funny situation where most of the pieces are under the attack of each other. Black played queen e3, capturing pawn with check, White played rook f2, and now bishop e6, black is protecting his rook from the attack and as well as his bishop. At this point, it may look like it's just time for white to resign, he's two pawns down in a calm position, but Carlsen also calculated a little bit further, he played here queen h5, and now it turns out that black has to give away his h zone pawn, because if he plays king g8, then, oops, checkmate in one move. Therefore, instead black played king to f8, but now white can take back one of the pawns, and black is only one pawn up, which is not such a huge advantage. However, now black starts his counterattack. He played rook at d1 check, and then queen g3 check, white play rook g2, and at this point it may seem like black miscalculated something, because once 
the black's queen, which is currently attacked. Once the queen will be removed from the g-file, then white will have the attack along the g-file, and the queen is already around the black's king, ready to give check or capture the g-seven pawn. It looks like now black is in danger, but Karakin calculated here and he foreseen a great move rook takes f1, which is a little combo, which ensures that on the next move black will capture the rook on g2, which is currently pinned, and now white is busted, black won the game. From the bright moments in the past encounters between these two highly talented players, you can see that these are extremely tough opponents. Both of them are highly creative, very tricky, and are able to find shocking moves and very unexpected tactical blows. So far, Carson is leading in the score against Karakin, but at the sa same time, they didn't play that many games uh, in the last years. Over the last two years, I think they played only three classical games, which is just too small to draw the conclusions. Therefore, although Carlson, the reigning world champion, remains to be the more likely candidate, anything may happen. Stay tuned for the actual world championship match. We'll be covering it after every game played. It's absolutely free, so you're welcome to... Uh, stay, stay tuned and visiting the website, checking our analyses of the upcoming games. It was my pleasure talking to you and, uh, well, write your predictions. Who do you think will win? Who is your favorite player between these two? Write your predictions in comments and I'll see you soon in the next videos covering the World Championship match.